Namaste. Let us resume our study of the Bhagavad Gita. Today we are going to discuss about equanimity and inner balance, which is so very required in this modern life, isn't it? So a very wonderful version of this perfect equanimity, inner equanimity, you will find its description in the Bhagavad Gita in the second chapter. Uh, it is actually the, the Sanskrit term for a person who is absolutely equanimous within himself, absolutely composed and self-controlled. He is called the Sthita Pragna, one whose intellect is absolutely calm and steady. So this, uh, the characteristics of this state have been very beautifully described in the Bhagavad Gita. Today we are going to discuss a little of this so as to understand how to bring this equanim equanimity, the ability to remain unperturbed no matter what is happening around us, how to bring this into our everyday lives. So the question is put by Arjun in the second chapter. Sthita pragnya sya ka bhasha samadhistha sya keshava sthita di kim prabhasheta kimasita vrajeta kim. Which means what is the nature of a person of perfect equanimity? And how does he contemplate? How does he sit? How does he talk and walk? Uh, what is the nature of that mind? And then the very beautiful answers given by Lord Krishna. You see, the, the very definition of a sthita pragnya, uh, you will find first being given. Lord Krishna says, Prajahati yada kaman sarvan partha manogatan atman yevatmana tushta sthita pragnyasta dochyate. One whose mind is completely bereft of desires, which can shake the mind, which can move the mind. So this kind of the, the mind, the state where one is free from all craving, longing for anything. That state of complete calm, calm that is the characteristic of the sthita pragna mind. So, prajahati yada kaman sarvan partha manogatan. All of these desires which keep the uh, thought currents deflected, moving rapidly. This has been arrested in that mind. And the, the another nature of that mind is, he is established in the self. Why is it that the mind has been able to reach this stage of utter calm because he rests in the self. He has touched the very foundation of the mental thought process and that is consciousness. He has established himself in that and then the erratic nature of the mind is naturally arrested as a result. So you see, this is a very important point for us to note. Whenever we say, how do I control my mind? It's so restless. It's all the time jumping about and I have no peace because of that. We should know that there is a technique to it. Unless one is composed within oneself, unless one has touched the very foundation of the mind, which is the pure being in you, the self, pure awareness. Unless one has, one has touched that, the mind cannot be completely brought under control like this. It cannot be made bereft of desires. So you see, these two go together. One who has established himself in the self maintains a perfectly equanimous state of mind. And such a person is called a sthita pragna. And then he has these wonderful characteristics again. Dukheshu anudvigna mana. Sukheshu vigata sprihaha, vita raga bhaya krodha, sthita dhir muni ruchyate. Lord Krishna says, which means, dukheshu anudvigna mana, one who is not shaken by sorrow. If the mind suffers a negative experience, he does not plunge into sorrow. He, somewhere he has been able to detach from the thought process, so he sees the thing as it is. He may feel the, the truth of that negative experience. But he does not agonize due to that. He does not get dissolved in it. He remains steadily calm, even in a state of great sorrow. And Sukheshu Vigata Sprihaha. He is detached even from 
द फ्लीटिंग जॉयस ऑफ लाइफ ही मे एपियर टू एक्सपीरियंस दैम ही स्माइल्स ही लाव्स ही इज परपेचुअली काम एंड हैप्पी बट डीपली डिटैच फ्रॉम ऑल दीज फ्लीटिंग सुपरफिशियल एक्सपीरियंसेस ऑफ लाइफ बिकॉज देर इज सच अ डीप लेवल कामनेस दैट रेन्स इन हिम दैट ही हैज नेचुरली डिस्टेंस हिमसेल्फ फ्रॉम द चेंजिंग जॉयज ऑफ लाइफ द चेंजिंग मूवमेंट्स ऑफ लाइफ so this is the characteristic nature of the sthita dhi uh, one whose intellect rests in the self and so he is vitaraga bhaya krodha in him he has been purged of rag attachment bhaya fear krodha anger all these negative tendencies do not exist in him you will not find him sharply retaliating you will not find him distressful or dist distasteful you will not find him angry and you will not find him lusting after something he has quelled his passions he has found the deep core of pure existence so how will he give in to all this so vita raga bhaya he has no fear his natural nature is he is fearless in fact he alone is able to enjoy life because he is free of attachments he is free of fear he is free of anger when you are enmeshed in these tell me how can you enjoy life hmm? so that is why one whose intellect rests in the self one who is well established in self knowledge he is the sthita pragna pragna is the higher intelligence or you can say awareness itself that when it rests in its in its very source then one becomes a sthita pragna so actually it may appear like a very elevated state of consciousness but if you explore and see and check your own mind you will see your mind is yearning for this state a satvik mind yearns to dissolve into its source so the sthita that is why the sthita pragna state has been described in so many words in the bhagavad gita that is the goal of all developed humanity it is the goal of all those who have understood the limitations of the mind then how to attain this state <laughs> so for this also the answer is given in the bhagavad gita itself in the same chapter how to attain this state what is the first steps we should take so what is what appears to be the siddhi of the siddha will become the sadhana of the sadhak which means the characteristics which the sthita pragna shows they are to be practiced in our life so that is why lord krishna says yada samharate chayam kurmongani va sarvashah indriyan indriyarthebhya tasya pragna pratishthita one who has withdrawn from the mere sense life and its impulses the merely superficial life of contact between sense and sense objects one who has withdrawn from that how as a tortoise withdraws its limbs you know it tucks its limbs under its shell so also one who has withdrawn from the mere sensate level of existence he gets this capacity to illumine his intellect with the knowledge of the self to establish his intellect in the self he spontaneously gets this see the great mischief makers are our senses check this out and see in your own life we may be blaming other people but the actual fact is our senses are uncontrolled and it is very clear in the bhagavad gita in fact this is the message of the bhagavad gita vashehi asya indriyani tasya pragna pratishthita one whose senses are under control his intellect is well established in the self and not otherwise the senses draws outward look at uh, look at the normal uh, level of perceptions in human beings because of the over activity of the senses and completely uncontrolled mind the senses are constantly hungering for experiences in the outer world so the 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 very eyes can show that the the chanchalya the restlessness in the eyes it is searching for experience in the outer world this f- fact has to be cornered understood and inner purification has to be attained for us to overcome this state 
where the senses are restful the senses are calm the senses are illumined by the inner light and they are not hankering for outer experiences for contact with sense objects this is the very first step to controlling mind and to self knowledge so this is what is being said you see when the senses become calm restful and well controlled they are withdrawn as it were within and not turned outward then one gets the capacity to transcend them to remove their uh, constant uh, rush outward and then one gets the ability to stabilize one's mind so then the pragna becomes very stable the higher intellect becomes luminous it becomes stable and it gets established in its source which is pure consciousness so this is the very first step to controlling the mind in fact it is said in our scriptures that animals you know they may have one sense organ very strong like the sense of smell or maybe sight and that makes them express all their animalistic tendencies in the human being all five senses are very strong the sense of sight hearing smell taste touch now if they are not controlled how animal like a man would become so the very first step to real culture let us remember is sense control and when we have not done this we have not even understood the importance of this we are far away from real culture cultural values in life a man progresses to the extent he has been able to understand where his senses can take him if they are controlled it will lead you to the highest if they are not controlled they can convert a human being into an animal or even worse into a demon so this is to be understood that is why this message of the bhagavad gita further on uh, you see always the refrain is tasya pragna pratishthita one who is like this his intellect becomes stable it becomes established in the self then lord krishna says vishaya vinivartante niraharasya dehinah rasavarjam rasopyasya param drishtva nivartate what does this mean see the senses can be withdrawn from sense objects but the taste for them may not vanish in the mind because of past experience one may appear self controlled but is still hankering for the experience of sense objects but one is able to overcome this taste also when one actually gets the experience of the self rasavarjam rasopyasya param drishtva nivartate if one gets the highest experience of one's true being one will no longer hanker after the experiences of the senses the taste for them goes once shri ramkrishna was asked what is the end point of sadhana and he said this when the senses have completely overcome their passions and the mind also then one has succeeded in his sadhana so the man of self control and complete purification complete purity is the highest evolved product of the human race let us understand this human evolution this is the meaning human evolution is not about survival of the fittest natural selection that applies to the animal world a human being is not a animal he has in him the capacity to evolve into something divine so then it human evolution culminates in this it it begins with a psychosocial evolution and culminates finally in spiritual illumination so this is only possible through control of the senses and not through freedom of the senses because today we have un- misunderstood the word freedom in many ways and that is why the bhagavad gita is again and again drawing our attention to this it also warns us the bhagavad gita is like a mother it warns us it tells us the power of the senses you see the this particular verse in the bhagavad gita indriyani pramathini haranti prasabha manah tani sarvani sayamya yukta asita matparah this is very significant it is telling us indriyani pramathini the senses are turbulent by nature and very forceful strong 
ஹரந்தி பிரசபம் மனஹ பை ஃபோர்ஸ் தே வில் கேரி அவே யோர் மைண்ட் தானி சர்வாணி சையம்ய தட் இஸ் வாய் கீப் தெம் கண்ட்ரோல் கீப் தெம் இன் செக் அண்ட் யுக்தா ஆசீத் தென் யூ வில் கெட் த கெப்பாசிட்டி டு கனெக்ட் வித் யோர் சோர்ஸ் தட் இஸ் த மீனிங் ஆஃப் யுக்தா ஒன் ஹூ இஸ் ஜாயின்ட் டு ஹிஸ் சோர்ஸ் ஆஸ் இட் வேர் அண்ட் டு ஹிம் டு சச் அ ஒன் ஹி வில் பி மத் பரஹ ஹி வில் பி இம்மர்ஸ்ட் இன் மை டிவினிட்டி ஹி வில் பி இம்மர்ஸ்ட் இன் மீ லார்ட் கிருஷ்ணா சேஸ் so the word yukta is used again and again in the bhagavad gita just to tell you deep inner connection of your mind with yourself is required for the stability of the mind for the control of the senses you begin by controlling the senses but then gradually you will see it is to do with stabilizing your intellect if that stands on a on a very stable platform then you can function marvelously in this world today when we ask the secret of success the secret of success essentially lies in building yourself in understanding how your system works and using it towards your goals in this proper manner and as long as we give a completely free rein to our senses and mind when we ourselves are uncontrolled don't think you will achieve success anywhere in life because a man who is not in control of himself what can he ever control in life tell me so this is the great message of the bhagavad gita the most essential part of human evolution is this when your psychosocial evolution culminates in a spiritual vision in a spiritual understanding in establishing you in your true self and not uh, keeping you in the clutches of an unruly mind and unruly senses so this is the very culmination of human evolution according to the bhagavad gita and then how is the, this to be practiced through repeated self control practice of self control that's why the gita has verses like ya nisha sarva bhutana tasyam jagrati sanyami yasyam jagrati bhutani sa nisha pashyato mune which means that which is day for ordinary people that is night for the yogi and that which is night for ordinary people that is day for the yogi because he has awakened into deep inner awareness and this is how he will use his time he will use it to plunge deeper and deeper into that awareness and that is why day becomes night to him night becomes day also there is a one very beautiful verse which shows the nature of the mind of the sthita pragna does is he not touched by anything in life is he not moved by any desire so for that you have this beautiful verse in chapter 2 again apuryamana machalam pratishtham samudra mapa pravishanti advat tadvat kama yam pravishanti sarve sa shanti mapnoti na kama kami who is it who attains real tranquility and peace in life one who is like the ocean into which streams may enter rivers may enter but the ocean remains full always isn't it untouched unmoved it is full and self contained it does not show turbulence isn't it hmm? very turbulent rivers may enter into it but still the ocean remains full and as it was because it is so vast so also your awareness is so vast and profound that anything entering into it if you have touched that awareness anything entering into your mind will leave it unmoved untouched as it were the gnani the man of realization he may appear to behave like an ordinary man he has his uh, likes he may prefer something he may not prefer something but it's only the superficial thing in his mind it is a superficial response in his mind deep down he is absolutely composed and stable and you can see that clearly from his personality so then this is the ideal state to be attained if one would become a sthita pragna a man of complete equanimity equanimous mind and great inner stability unperturbed by all the changing vicissitudes of life untouched you see what we actually dread is change isn't it because change requires adaptation and that requires change in oneself 
So this most people are not prepared for. But for the sthita pragna, he is in a state of such inner calmness and stability, any changes will come. He understands that all outer changes will come and go. But deep within him is an ocean of awareness which is ever untouched and unperturbable. It cannot be touched by anything. So to discover this, the very source of peace, joy, calmness within you is the whole goal of human life. And the message of the Bhagavad Gita, the pointers which the Gita are give, is giving us, they are invaluable in our sadhana. The essential thing is learn to control the senses and not give in to them. Learn to handle your mind and not giving in to it. And learn to remain detached from within and use these as your instruments and you will, you can do anything you wish in life because your instrumentation will be in your hands. Touch that source of complete equanimity and silence within you because if you're, if you have touched that stillness, you will perpetually be calm and as a result, you will be able to function best in this world because you are not carried away by anything. You are so stable within yourself, you will be perfectly reliable. You will essentially be the perfect leader which the world wants. In your own workplace, you will be a leader. So in leadership models today also, we are giving these verses. This is the ideal human state to be attained by any developed human mind so that we achieve the most out of our life. This is the Sthita Pragna ideal of the Bhagavad Gita. Om Shanti Shanti Shanti